Apparently, the Daily Caller has unmasked a member of Antifa. And there's like this expose where they're saying this dude apparently is like, he's quoted by Senator Feinstein and, and things like that. Okay, so here's, here's a story from the Daily Caller. Uh, following up, they say, progressive nonprofit caught trying to conceal references to its employee, unmasked Antifa leader, Joseph Alkoff. I gotta say something. I, I don't wanna do this story for, for one reason. I know this man. They call him uh, Chepe, as they, they actually outline in the story. That's what he was referred to as, uh, as che he was referred to as Chepe in, um, during Occupy Wall Street. And he was one of the like far left types who didn't like me especially. So while many people on the left were, you know, um, very supportive of my coverage during Occupy, he was not. And so there was a contingent of people during Occupy Wall Street who were far left, black block types. They weren't called Antifa at the time. He was included. And uh, I, I'm not going to, I certainly wouldn't implicate him. In, he was just basically like trolling me, you know, and that's fine. By all means, he's allowed to criticize me and, and, and dislike me. And I, I can actually appreciate his, his right to do that and that he does do it because more people should. Um, there was one moment where I was on a panel about drone usage. He showed up and started throwing questions about funding that made no sense. Now, one of the big main problems I had with him is that he made things up. He like... Uh, at one point accused me of stealing $80,000 from Occupy, which is just absolute nonsense. Like, I don't even know, like, how do you come up with that nonsense? But he wasn't one of the people who, who physically attacked me. So I actually, like, I have, a, I have a disagreement with this guy over a lot of issues. I think he's a fringe extremist for sure. And I think I, it's just kind of funny for me to see this story where they're like, they got him. I'm like, uh, <laughs> like, the dude's not, like, the most important guy in the world. They call him an Antifa leader. It's like, I mean, he's an, he's an activist. It's not like he's particularly prominent. His brother works for, uh, they say this in the story, his brother works for Democracy Now! And his brother was always super cool to me and actually uh, told me that he would, you know, have to tell, you know, Chepe kind of chill out on the, on, the, on, the, on the rhetoric stuff. So it, it, it's funny to me because, for one, you know, this guy just seemed like your, your run-of-the-mill street activist and it doesn't seem like he's prominent by any means. Like, I, I, I find this story, I gotta, I gotta say, it's like really silly that they've unmasked some Antifa guy, and it's just... But, 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 but I will say this. This story, the fall I, I, didn't, I didn't do a video on the main story about how they unmasked him, because I'm like, dude, you found a street activist, and you, you talked about him. I really don't see that as a big deal, because I know... I, like, I, I, I knew this. I knew all of this. And I know this, uh, similar things about a ton of people. And I don't think it's a, it's a scandal by any means that street activists and anti-fascists work for nonprofits. But this is interesting. Progressive nonprofit caught trying to conceal references to its employee. This is where things change because I could probably name tons of anti activists and the nonprofits they work for. I don't think that's relevant by, by no means. I'm not going to draw screw, like point to activists. There's, there's like no reason to do it. Even though this guy, Jeppe, was very mean to me and made things up about me, I have no reason to make a video about him because the story is silly. But if, an, if a nonprofit organization is trying to conceal that, well, now something's happening. Why is that? What is he doing that you're trying to hide? Because admittedly, I don't know what this guy does 24-7. I actually haven't thought twice about this guy in like six years. But if, if this story is leading to them trying to hide the fact, well, now you've got something happening because maybe this guy's actually doing something. So let's read what they say. They say, The progressive nonprofit organization that employs Antifa leader Joseph Elkoff, who has advocated for a violent overthrow of the government, obscured references to the radical communist, and its past press releases after Alkoff's extreme ideology was exposed. They say uh, Alkoff has made significant efforts to separate his true identity from his fanatical personas, Chepe and Jose Martin, which he uses to lead Antifa groups and promote radical communist rhetoric. The Daily Caller News Foundation revealed Tuesday night as Alkoff, he advocates for reforms of predatory loans before members of Congress as payday campaign manager for America's Americans from, for financial reform. When speaking as Chepe and through his Twitter handle, Sabo Kitty, Alkoff has called for the murder of the rich and encourages using violence to bring a world without capitalism, without private property, that is socialist and communist. He's used his Jose Martin persona to promote socialism on MSNBC and BBC radio programs. In 2017, they, Alkoff urged his nonviolent followers on Twitter to stop limiting yourself, adding, the left wins nothing with nonviolence. He said it feels good to see Antifa's militant tactics mainstream the following month. So this is really interesting to me because um, there's this, uh, there's like a reporter guy who is Antifa basically, who started trolling me on Twitter 
not realizing that I actually know a whole lot about him, all his friends, and Chepe, and all their friends too. This is what's baffling to me. Or maybe, maybe the reason they lie about me and try and smear me is because they know I know their names, I know their friends, I know where they live, and their friends talk to me like relatively often. There's another funny thing about the people who, who try and accuse me of having friends who are alt-right. It's like, dude, almost all of my friends are on the left. Like my core friends who I actually hang out with, like go skateboarding with, mostly apolitical, but like hippie lefties, like vaping and playing video games all day. Like we'll play Magic the Gathering and then go skating, and it's mostly like lefty positions. A lot of, uh, a lot of my friends, and admittedly I don't hang out with a ton of people, but when I do, they're basically borderline Democrat socialist types like Bernie Sanders fans. However, in the periphery to all of my friends, there, I have some friends who are associated with Antifa. I've talked about this in the past, who are intersectional feminists. And the reason people always say like, well, why aren't they in photos with you? Why don't you? Uh, uh, because they know that these people will target them with violence if they do that. The right doesn't care. They like they some some of these people even want and encourage the fight. They want to get into that fight and defend themselves and like make a point or something. But my friends on the left, or anyway, so this guy's trolling me, and then all all of a sudden it's like, dude, I know like who you are and what you do. And a lot of these people are super, super racist. You know, this is one of the reasons I don't like these people. But it's funny because I know all of this stuff about these Antifa people. I know their names, I know their full names, I know their families, I know where they live. And maybe that's why they target me so often because they're, cons they're, they're scared. Or admittedly, I mean, it's kind of strange, but I'm not, I'm not someone who would ever dox anybody. I didn't even want to make a video about this story in the first place because I think it's silly to talk about someone like, you know, Chepe. But maybe they're concerned that I would or something, or maybe they know that I won't and that's why they think I'm fair game. I don't know. But I got to say, if I ever did want to be like, oh, here's my email. I'm, 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 <laughs> this is funny. I have email chains that these people still use. They have me in them. Like, I'm, I've been doing this for a year, like seven years. They've put me in these email lists to send me this information. And then they act like, I, I don't know, I, I, I think maybe they just don't care. Maybe they want me to, to give publicity to them. I don't. I don't ever talk about this stuff. And that's, again, why I didn't make a video about it. But let's, let's, let's read on. I want to I read about why they're scrubbing this. So Alcoff is an organizer for Smash Racism DC, the Antifa group responsible for mobbing uh, Tucker Carlson's house in November and chasing Ted Cruz from a DC restaurant in September. AFR did not respond to multiple requests for comment, asking if it was aware of Alcoff's extreme and violent rhetoric or if it planned on taking any action in regards to the radical statements. No, let me make something clear to all of you. They all support him. They all know who he is. I, I, like, I, another thing that was shocking to me is that apparently people don't know this. I thought this was like common knowledge. You know, it's not hard to walk into the middle of the street, meet someone like Chepe, and learn all about who his family, friends, and where, and like everything, and, and where he works. I'll just say this, as someone who is not friends with this man, as someone who this guy hates in all likelihood, I'm pretty sure I've been blocked, actually, the very few people I do. Um, I know a lot about him. I know who his brother is. I know where he worked. You know, it's like, and I'm, I'm somebody who is like not friends with this guy. Think about this. He works with these people. They are, they are hiding information about him. It's, it's, it's like, I, I'm, I, I'm just shocked to find out people didn't know this. Like, you could easily just do a Google search and find people who have these extremist views. On, like, go on Twitter, find his Twitter account. You see the things he posts. It'll take you 10 minutes to find who he works for. And then you think these people don't know he calls for violent insurrection? That's shocking to me. It, it, like, when DC ran the story, I started laughing. I'm like, is this a, a, a scoop? Like, the Daily Caller actually thinks this is news? And I guess it's my own bias that I didn't realize apparently this matters to a lot of people. Because like, wow, I could probably produce like 15 of these per day talking about the things I know. And I don't because I just didn't think it was news. Like we know Antifa is violent. We know they advocate for violence. Why would I, why would I do anything like this? You know what I mean? They say the Daily Caller News Foundation contacted AFR at 1213 p.m. local time to inquire why it scrubbed Alcoff's name from its press release. Less than 30 minutes later, his full name was added back to the press releases. For example, Jose, Jose Alcoff was originally quoted in May 31st press release. According to a Google uh, cache of the, of, the, of the webpage, his name has been modified to Jose A. When the, D when the DCNF archived the press release Wednesday, it was modified again to include his name. That says to me that they know about the scandal and they're going back and forth trying to figure out what the right thing to do is. So they say that they show that it's been changed. The, uh, is, is that it though? Like, here's another thing. Like, is that is that is that it? They changed the name on a press release. They say the DCNF archived three press releases with timestamps showing modifications. Okay, so so that that that's legit. 
AFR did not respond to multiple requests for comment asking why the changes were made. Additionally, Stop the Debt campaign, the AFR arm where, Al where Alcoff works, tweeted individual pictures of its employees on June 21st, 2016. Each tweet included the employee's full name except Alcoff, who was only listed as Jose. And I just want to say this. Go to any protest. They will tell you his name. It's not that hard to find out. I just don't think it's a secret, right? This, yeah, this dude goes on Twitter and he tweets, like, calls for violence and stuff. I, I, I've just always known that. The funny thing is, I have people who are like, you've changed, Tim, uh, and they're all mad at me, and it's like, when? When did I change? Like, did you ever watch any of the things I did? These people were physically attacking me when I started doing this. The famous moment on, on, uh, in, on November 15th, 2011, three black block masked individuals started hitting me on my live stream. Like, this is not a secret. It's not new. They've always hated me. And I've always criticized them for being violent insurrectionary types. It's nice. Like, I, my opinion's the same. It's funny. They're like, Tim went to, uh, Tim went to Berkeley and started defending the Trump supporters. I was like, no, once again, I was criticizing Antifa specifically. And you could argue that it's a defense of Trump supporters because they're certainly allowed to speak about what they like. And this is what's really terrifying to me. The rhetoric from Antifa has skyrocketed. It's escalated to an extreme degree. They're engaging in physical violence. You've got the Bernie guy who got bashed in Portland. You've got the bike lock basher. You've got the Marines beaten in Philadelphia, the innocent Jewish guy beaten. I, and that's at the top of my head. You want to make a list of these things? There's like a list of 700 that, that have already been produced by people, right? And then I see the National Lawyers Guild defending them on their behalf, watching what they do. And I'm shocked. I'm like... That's really it. That's the game. They're liars. They're cheaters. They're stealers, man. Anyway, more videos to come. Click my name. You'll see them. I make a, I make a ton of videos. They'll, they'll be up. I'll see you in a second.